Hi, my name's Maya. Hi, my name's Eula. And, and welcome, welcome to the University of Oversharing. So what is the University of Oversharing? We're two women who are over-opinionated, under-educated and ready to talk about absolutely anything. Coming at you with all of the bravado and none of the background research. So if you're ready to take this journey with us into the depths of hell, subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Lecture one, an introduction to oversharing. Sava? Welcome. Welcome. Is your phone turned off? Yes, it is. Mine is not. I'm just going to do that now. Miss Maya, unprofessional. Right, can we restart? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Restart. <coughs> Hello. Hi. Welcome to the first official podcast. The first official podcast <laughs> of the University of Oversharing. Um, my name is Maya. My name's Eula. I'm 20. I'm 21. <laughs> I just graduated from law school. And I currently go to film school. So the reason why we're laughing about this is because we've done this segment... <laughs> many times. Many times. We've had several issues. Sometimes with... things go wrong. And that's okay. That's fine. We live and learn and grow. We do indeed. As Maya would say, we move. We do move. <laughs> also, I thought you were going to go with, as Maya would say, we don't grow because I haven't grown in like four years and I was ready to be like... Oh my God, me neither. I haven't grown since I was 14. Same. Nice. Cheers to that. Oh, that's a good sound. <laughs> so, welcome to our podcast. Mm-hmm. We are the University of Oversharing. We're here to overshare, we're here to chat some shit, we're here to have a good time, ultimately. We're here to stand our Polaroids up. Yeah, good vibes only. Mm -hmm. So if you've got bad vibes... Fuck off. Go away, go away, go away, go away. Because <laughs> you're only going to bring bad vibes. <laughs> when there's too much drama, all you got to do is <laughs> walk, walk away. away. <laughs> We've reached a whole new level of delirium. Yep. Yeah. Oh my, it's just splashed me with the water. That's fine. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I'm used to the harassment at this point. Um, so, Eula, what are we talking about today? I believe today we're talking about social media, baby. We are indeed. We picked social media about five minutes ago. Yes, we did. Um, but social media is a big part of everyone's lives, I think. For sure. I think it's really interesting, especially for people our age, to talk about social media because it's like we're sort of on that cusp of like... Like, we remember when the first smartphones came out and stuff. Like, a, a lot of our childhood was, you know, yomping around in the woods outside and stuff. And then a lot of it was also being online. Like, I feel like we were very much present for the upswing of all of that. Like, we were around when Facebook started, we were around when Twitter started, we were around when TikTok started. Yeah, we were the generation that learned both I think. Yeah. Sorry if you can hear my laptop in the background. She's just chilling. She's having a moment. She's it's just, fine. Just airing herself. We love her. But yeah, unlike other generations, we were born into a generation without that much technology. And then it all kind of came at once, and it right? All kicked off, and now here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Making a podcast mm. for the internet. Who'd have thunk it? Look at us. I feel like a lot of people do podcasts, but. Every podcast I've listened to, they all bring something different. Yeah. I like that about podcasts. Like, there's not, it's never really, you can never really have the same thing. You can talk about the same kind of general ideas, but it's never really the same thing. If you're different people with different dynamics, it's got a different feel to it. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to about our podcast is that I feel like a lot of times, specifically when women make podcasts, um, they sort of sell themselves with a very niche specific interest which is awesome don't get me wrong it's really fucking cool big up the women podcasters but on the flip side of that i feel like you have a lot of kind of just straight white men who get on with their friends and chat shit about anything and so we are women i'm not straight you're not white and we are here to chat shit about literally everything and anything yeah um, which is what is so exciting is that I, I hope that in the future um, you guys will throw topics at, at us. Yeah. Topics that we, we, well, we, what we plan on doing is eventually getting to the point where we will pick a topic out while we're filming. Like out of a hat or something. Yeah. And 
throw ourselves into the situation of possibly something we've never even heard about or yeah man or there's a lot of misconception around it and just kind of hash out what we believe it is and it's not like a we are right we know we are right it's a we're learning yeah and we want to learn about different things and you can come and learn with us if you want yeah you can come and listen to us chat fucking shit for 45 minutes and <laughs> i'm look. i'm so excited for it like, me too i was actually i was very sad that we had some technical blips with our previous podcast because yeah. i felt like we were on a good roll we and were. do you think that maybe we should release it as a bonus episode or something like the first yeah. half so basically what happened is <laughs> the first half i fucked up the audio because it, the mic as you can hear now it's really clear yes however the mic wasn't the main input of audio it was the laptop which is on my knee so i was fine because i'm next to it me not so much muffled (laughs) and then we figured it out because we took a break halfway through yeah we figured it out and we listened to it back and we're like what's going on so we were filming the second half of the podcast we paused it because it was raining really heavily and then i guess we forgot to press play well no this is the thing we did we did press play because I remember showing you the Oh, yeah, 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 you were. You did, you did. But it just went into the ether. Yeah, Apple just... She's in the upside down. It's okay. But um, we move. We do. Um, yeah, so today we're talking about social media. Social motherfucking media. Which brings us to the point about where we decided to ha- make a podcast from. We were... Right, yes, we were having a FaceTime. I was having a bit of a crisis and I called Maya because I had this really weird dream and I just wanted to talk it through and interpret it with someone and then Maya was having a crisis of her own and so then we were just chatting shit for ages and then we just sort of realised that we're both very gorgeous and funny and that we should make a podcast. Yeah, like 45 minutes had gone by and I was like, you know, we've been talking for this long and you were like, and what yeah and then i can't remember who suggested it It was probably you you were like we should do a podcast and it's it's one of those things that we were like yeah let's do a podcast never gonna do a podcast at all and then we totally did here we are yeah a month and a half later i think it's really a good thing to see your ideas through even if they go wrong even if they go wrong many times over the same couple of days i think it's really worth if you have some kind of concept that you want to have a stab at just fucking give it a go like what's the worst that can happen exactly like throw yourself into things and if you decide just to keep them for yourself that's fine fine. like you gave it a go you probably learned some stuff about yourself and technology and how much we hate it we do hate technology it's the bane of our existence but it also makes our lives so much easier we also love technology yeah so we got the ball rolling with the podcast because we got the album cover done oh my god yes if you guys haven't seen i'm sure you have if you're tuning in um our podcast was our cover photo was designed by maya's amazing friend evie who where can you follow evie maya so evie's instagram handle is evie underscore p underscore art yes please go give her a like and follow uh we're really really happy with the artwork she came up with us for us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> she is insanely talented thank you so much Evie so seeing the the album cover set it in stone yeah and um, and then once we'd gone from there we were brainstorming ideas and mm-hmm. then we were tackling the idea like the issues around the theme tune yeah 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 obviously there's so much royalty free music but we were finding that all the music we were coming across was just sounded like a no shade on vloggers um, oh the, no the shade from me no shade from me <laughs> that you use like the stereotypical like do 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 yeah. that kind of music but we were like we were like we don't want that we don't want to sound identical to everyone else we are different and i'm very fortunate to have an older brother who is a musician extremely talented yeah he's wonderful so big shout out jimmy thank um, you jimmy thank you jimmy this he... drinks for you it's water yes this is also water <laughs> Um, he doesn't have any social set up at the minute but i'll go and nag him and make him get on it and then i'll link it down below in one of the future episodes and y'all can go give him a follow 
Hi, this is Eula coming at you from the edit just to say that Jimmy does in fact have social media and I'm just a really bad sister. So you can follow him on Facebook at Jim and Lou. Thanks. Yes, please. But please support these two amazing people that have worked extremely hard to help us get here. That's one thing about social media, isn't it? I feel like... um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of your friends and a lot of my friends also have been able to come up with these amazing business venture ideas that they wouldn't have been able to do without the internet. Absolutely. It's so fucking cool. It's amazing. Looking at all of the stuff that people are able to distribute. Yes. Like, so worldwide. Our friend Izzy. Yes. Has just started. Izzy, her, better be watching. Her own sock company. Yes. Crew Sock Shop at crew sock shop on depop and instagram i've just ordered the peach ones myself because all of my socks have holes in them i'm ordering some tomorrow but i'm deciding which ones i want because there are a few but basically what izzy does like with her company is they embroider cute little fruits onto socks and they're adorable they're reasonably priced they're five pounds plus one pound shipping yeah only shipping in the uk at the moment at the moment but keyword being at the moment um, please go support. Like They are amazing. She's put a lot of effort into it. Hype up your friends. Hype up your friends' art. Yeah. yeah. If you have friends that are artists, mm-hmm. which we both do because that's... Especially you because it's the industry that you're in. It is, very much so, yeah. I have a couple of other friends I want to hype up, if that's okay. Go for it. Okay, so um, my friend Zinzi, as a response to to the whole Black Lives Matter movement, they've started a podcast called A Space To Be Heard, which you can find on SoundCloud, and it's about their experience as black students in a dance academy. And I found it really eye-opening, um, heartbreaking in some aspects, funny in other aspects. Um, you know, they're all very charming and articulate, and I love, I love a Geordie accent on a podcast. Who else? Um, My friend Molly has a zine that's just come out with its third issue called Spilt Milk Zine. You can find them on Instagram. And it's all about gathering female and non-binary artists in the Northeast and just showcasing their art and creating like a community and a hub for people who do that. So, space to be heard, Spilt Milk Zine. I want to shout out our friend Charlie. Mmm... Hi, Charlie. You better be watching. Charlie is a stage manager in Uh London, but it's like that kind of industry that's really taking a massive hit. They are fully in the shit at the minute. Please be kind to all of your theatre friends at the moment. They are going the fuck through it. Not just your theatre friends, but your creative arts friends, because... yeah. I mean, it's. I suppose, it, I'm assuming it might be a little bit easier for you. It is. I'm actually doing probably more filmmaking now than I have done throughout my entire year. Exactly. <laughs> Which is great. But obviously, I mean, specifically with the Theatre Friends, you know, war fucking Bojo, I'm sure we'll talk plenty about how we feel about him in the coming episodes. Uh, spoiler alert, strongly negative. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not for you, then... Bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, <laughs> But yeah, just support your friends that are going through hard times in the industry and reach out to them as well. If you can't support them financially, financially, just check up, check up, check up or check in on them. Yeah, check in, support, buy their shit, donate to their causes. It's all good. We love our friends. We love our artist friends. Yeah, it's like the BLM movement in times of like, educate yourself. See yes. what you can do to help. It applies to many different things, but that's for another podcast, Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So social media is a massive thing in helping people. Yes. helping artists grow... Excuse me. (laughs) Grow and build audiences, which I... Is a blessing. It is a blessing. Yeah. Many disadvantages to social media. Many vices and virtues in it. Yes, but the big picture, it allows you to think of ideas and create podcasts with your friends and distribute stuff like worldwide which is fucking awesome yeah so we love social media but also we hate it but we hate social media because we hate i personally hate the persona that social media makes you create do you feel like you have a social media persona not as in not a persona but like a body image 
Right. Like, I'm... I'll openly say I'm not happy with my body and that's on me. Like, okay. I've let myself go over um, lockdown. I religiously went to the gym quite a lot when it wasn't. Like, mm-hmm. this year was hard for me anyway. But second and first year of uni, I was going to the gym, like, three times a week. Maybe I remember. Four. Every time I messaged you, at the gym. <laughs> yeah, like, I was getting into it. And lockdown, pff, and this year, it's just thrown it out the window. I really hear you, yeah. Um, and then you compare yourself to absolutely beautifully stunning skinny girls on social media because that's all i ever see on my newsfeed and i'm like i don't want to see just beautifully skinny girls i want to see all body shape like shapes all body shapes <laughs> all body shapes i want to see everyone taking a shit <laughs> show me everything show me the roll show me the stretch mark Fuck show me yes, natural girl. hair show me people waking up in the morning show me skinny people that are beautiful show me curvy people that are beautiful please just show me it all because mm-hmm. i don't want to have to compare myself because you do compare yourself. Yeah. Like, you can sit back and say you don't compare yourself, but you, you do. I would actually like to say, I don't. I'm, a st- I, I don't know how, but, like, hats off for not being able to, like, compare yourself. Anything, like, any issues that I might have with my body, to be honest, they're, they're completely, like... I mean, yeah, like, I would used to think, oh, I've got... Because, you know, I mean, I do fully acknowledge that I am quite a slim person. I've put on some weight over lockdown. I don't really mind. I'm getting used to it. Um, But, yeah, like, there are aspects of my body that I'm not very happy with. Um, I have an outy belly button. For a very long time, I was very insecure about that. Um, I've a lot of body hair. (laughs) Um, uh, I used to be quite insecure about my nose as well because it's, I mean, it's not big, it's just quite prominent. But, you know, I feel like I've kind of come into a sort of like, this is my body, you know, it gets me places. Um, I'm going to love it, I'm going to look after it, I'm going to feed it and rest it and like acknowledge the parts of me that maybe I might want to change and really celebrate the parts of me that I really like and stuff and then also you know I'm I'm quite into body mods as well you know I've got quite a few piercings I dye my hair very frequently I've got a couple of tattoos I've got four tattoos um I would love to get some more obviously that's not happening at the minute because that's very unsocial distancing (laughs) Um, but yeah, I don't know. My main issues with myself are with my personality. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love, I love that you are comfortable with yourself. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm fucking gorgeous. I think, I think we, you're gorgeous too. I love that. But I think the thing we need to take away from that is Eula is 21. Like yes. when she was 13, 14, probably thought differently. Yes, I was very greasy. And that's the point. <laughs> The point is that social media now, you've got 13-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds, boys and girls both comparing themselves Mm. to the stereotypical body and non-binary folk that are comparing themselves, being told they have to look a certain way, act a certain way. And it's like, no. Fuck no. I'll tell you one thing that I have found recently. So during lockdown, um, before lockdown, I deleted Twitter. And then I was kind of like, oh, fuck, I've got nothing to scroll through now. It was a feeble attempt to try and reduce my social media (laughs) times. Because (laughs) then what I ended up doing was downloading TikTok. And honestly, I mean, for the most part, I have a great time. Um, I do, while algorithms at their core terrify me and i'm sure we'll get into that in a minute um i do enjoy the like tailored for you page and um, maya's just topping up her water if you're wondering what that audio is um so yeah i do enjoy that aspect of it like i get a lot of artistic content i get a lot of lgbt content and a frogs. lot of like frogs yes funny like meme shit whatever um but at the same time, like, not even necessarily appearance-wise, but just, like, talent-wise, like, I get a lot of really fucking talented people on my For You page, and I look at them, and I'm like, you know, lying in bed, crisps on my titties, Chin. drool on my face, like, what am I doing with my life, you know what I mean? But then at the same time, I'm sure that these people also have moments like that, they just also have a very large following and they're good at presenting their talents in a very specific way yeah. so you've got to remind yourself of all of that yeah well so i went viral on tiktok yes she did let's get into this what did you do i 
I know what you do. Have like a talent, as some would say, to be able to put my eyeliner on extremely fast. Really fucking I fast. I can do it in under seven seconds. It's and cool. it is a brag, but it's a brag I embrace and I brag love. away. However, so my video went viral, like over two million likes. Like yeah. Nine I'm just million. checking, can you sorry to interrupt you. Can you yeah, still see a red, red light? light. Still on. Okay, so you went So I went viral and um, as in over 2 million likes, 9 million views. Yes, And it's queen. great. It is cool. Like, I've got, like, 23,000 followers on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So not loads compared to people that, like, the hype house, etc. Well, I mean, I have, like, 12. So <laughs> <laughs> but, shout out to my 12 TikTok followers. Love the fam. <laughs> <laughs> but what made me feel sick was... The video was posted on several Instagram pages. Oh, yeah. That had, like, 9 million followers, 7 mm-hmm. million followers, 2 million followers. And the comments from people that didn't even know who I was, like, I can take them. That's not even that fast. She didn't f- even fill it in. That's not the point. Like, I'm just doing my... I don't know. However, I cannot take them. She looks like a drug dealer, a boy. I looked ugly with makeup, ugly without makeup. I wasn't filling it in right. And it was just, like... What's the point? Like, what are you getting out of it? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I only had 15 minutes of fame. Mm-hmm. Um, but the young girls like Charlie D'Amelio, mm-hmm. Avani, Addison Ray, Dixie D'Amelio, they've got millions and millions of oh, followers. Oh, they're two D'Amelios. Yeah, the, the sisters. Oh. And, and Charlie's 16. She, like, just turned 16. And she got so much hate for her body. Bro. People were saying she was too fat, too skinny. They could see her ribs. Like, fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck all the way off, man. It's... I think some of it stems from jealousy, obviously. You know, maybe they're jealous of the fame. Maybe they're jealous of the body or the beauty or the confidence even. Or, like... And then I think also it's that veil of, like, anonymity. Of, like, you know, that kind of shit you would never say your face. Like... Have you ever had somebody just march up to you in the street and go, you look like a drug dealer, and then walk away? I understand that these things do happen to people sometimes, the whole, like, racial profiling or, like, bullying in the streets or whatever and stuff like that. Um, But not with that same confidence of, like, I'm just going to post this and then I'm going to rest easy. Yeah, it's the whole sitting behind the screen. Yeah. Um. You can say what the fuck you want when you're behind the screen. Yes. Because what what's anyone ever gonna do? Mm. Like what 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 is someone ever gonna do if I call them a daft bitch? Like the worst they could probably do is block you. Yeah, and it that brings you satisfaction because it's like ha. It is. I it won. is kind of satisfying. Yeah, like oh, I don't know. So there is. There is so many advantages to just uh, to social media. Yeah. But there are so many disadvantages. Have you seen that um the White Christmas Black Mirror episode? No, the I've one never where seen they any can of Black Mirror. Oh, um do you mind if I tell you about Go it? For it? Okay. So there's this one they did a Christmas special which was like an anthology one, you know, they had a few stories rolled into one. And one of them was about um like blocking people in real life, like having some sort of something put into your brain or your vision where that if you didn't want to see or talk to anybody it would like muffle their speech and blur them like through your actual eyes that sounds cool and then there was this guy i don't remember what he did i think it was some sort of sex crime I'm not 100% certain. He was blocked out to everyone. Like, he goes outside and he's walking around and, like, everyone can just see kind of a red blur and he's trying to talk to people and they can't hear him or see him. Whoa. Crazy. Yeah, see, I'm scared to watch Black Mirror. Why? I think it's, like, such a mind fuck. Some of them are really nice. Some of them are, like, kind of, like you know, funny or romantic. I mean, most of them are harrowing. And I would definitely recommend the interactive episode. Is this the Bandersnatch one? Yeah. Because um, Will Poulter's in it, um, who was in Narnia when We're the Millers. Wait, who was he in Narnia? Um, he was um in the third one. He was oh, I, I, I didn't see that right. And this actually brings us back round to social media because Will quit social media for like six months because he was getting so much hate for what because of his his image like his eyebrows oh people were ripping shit into him and he was like 
He's like, I'm not having it. I'm stepping back from social media for a while. That's fair. Working on my image, like my mental health. And that's the, that's the thing. Like he's Will's like 24. Yeah. Um, has obviously had a lot of comments. Hmm. Um, on the right path, knows exactly what he wants to do. Very grounded, fights for the right things. Yeah. And um, very vocal about what he believes in. And this poor man had to take a step back and be like, like, I can't. And no. I think it was really eye-opening as well for the industry to see that it's not just females that get it. Oh, fully, yeah. Like, no, men no, no. get it too. Yeah. Um, and I stand by him taking a step back. I think it's... Yeah, I think that's really good. I know a few people who have recently sort of been like, okay, I just need to fucking time out. Especially because now that we're in lockdown, like, most of our work and our social interactions are done digitally um i mean we're very lucky to be in a space now where like restrictions have lifted um uh, but you know a few months ago that definitely wasn't the case yeah. and the only way you could hang out with your friends is on zoom and stuff and like you get a real kind i was talking to my mom about this the other day because she's freelance and she has a lot of uh meetings and conferences and stuff on facetime and zoom and like zoom fatigue is fucking real it really is just like endless day in day out talking to people on an itty bitty screen when all you want to do is like see them in real life and like it's hard isn't it yeah man it really is well you find yourself just scrolling social media Mm. and obviously it didn't help when finally the black lives matter movement properly hit the scene thank god properly but i i tweeted about it because i was like i no longer go to the news to listen and check the world news you can't trust the news i go to twitter you cannot trust the news because i i know that what i'm getting is real it's happening and it's not being whitewashed or hidden Mm -hmm. like twitter was my source of news and it was upsetting to scroll down my news feed um and just see so many different things going on but it's upsetting now that i'm scrolling down my news feed and i'm not seeing it you're not seeing it no because i know it's still fucking happening of course and it's frustrating that no one on my followers is retweeting it enough that that I can see it like mm. my Instagram I did a massive post like story post yesterday oh right and I called out people black facing in terms of tans and I was like you need to read this they call it black fishing that's don't it they? black fishing read this read that your daily reminder that it's not over that the fight has not been won like but, you but cannot you know, stay fucking silent. One thing that I worry about with the Black Lives Matter movement is that it'll go down the similar route as the Me Too movement. Because now you get lots of people and they talk about, like, we're living in a post-Me Too world. Like, at the end of the day, I feel like the Me Too movement accomplished a lot in terms of, you know, starting a dialogue and... You know, obviously, Harvey Weinstein has been imprisoned now. Thank God. Rot in jail. Amazing. But at the same time, you know, place like... How do I phrase this? You know, sexism, sexual harassment, sexual assault, it still happens on a microcosmic basis every fucking day. And when people talk about we're in a post me to world... That really bothers me because it's not like this big event, this one-time event, like, oh, we did it, we we solved feminism and now society's amazing. And no. I do not want that to happen with the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't want it to have been this thing that goes on for, like, you know, a few weeks or months or even, like, a year is still not enough. This conversation needs to go on for the rest of our lives. We cannot be, be living... Generation to generation to generation. Fucking bingo. We cannot be living in a post-Black Lives Matter world because Black Lives always matter and yeah. consent is always important. If, in the least insensitive way, if we can teach the Holocaust yeah. and we can teach the Civil Wars, etc., etc., then we can teach... Black Lives Matter, and it should be school curriculum, and it is not school curriculum. Oh my god, the school curriculum is so painfully whitewashed. Did you take history? No. I took history in school, and what we did was we did suffragettes, we did the Vietnam War, 
and we did the Cold War, like, beyond the Vietnam War. Like, that's it. But this is the thing, in tying with social media, is that kids have access to so many resources. Yes. Um, and they have to teach themselves their history. Yeah. I had to teach myself, and I still don't know it, the history of the Bengal famine. I fully heard about it a week ago, two weeks Fuck, ago. Fuck, dude. Like, skipped, it skipped fucking generations. Yeah. Like, we idolise people and we put them on a pedestal. Like Churchill. Yeah. And unfortunately, however much good they did, they, we cannot rule out the fact that they destroyed civilizations Mm -hmm. and they did think about the darkest hour when that film came out i've never seen it oh don't bother (laughs) okay don't fucking bother uh no shade to gary oldman you know he's a good actor or whatever and um actually maybe shade to gary oldman (laughs) did a little little, umpo umpo um yeah, so we, um, I went to see Darkest Hour in cinema because I was with somebody at the time who was very interested in military history. So it was like, okay, here we go. Uh, I like cinema, you like military history, let's do it. Um, we went to see it and it was very much in a biased lens of looking at Churchill. Like, it was very much, this is all the good he did in the war, this is all the, like, funny, quirky conversations he had with his sexy secretaries or whatever, you know? Mm. Like, it was just, it was very blatantly whitewashed and not a fair, rounded interpretation of Churchill as a guy. It's like when Scarlett Johansson played a tree. That one fucking character. You talking about Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, I think right. so. That shouldn't have been whitewashed. Yeah. Although one thing that I mean, I'm not. Do not quote me on this because I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I think that the thing with Ghost in the Shell was that the person, well, person that Scarlett Johansson was playing was a robot. It was oh, really? like a robot character. So I don't know if that's. Oh shit! Sorry, I've left my. Phone. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the robot specifically had a specific race that they oh, okay. had to pertain to. So I think there were some complications in that. I do agree that there's a whole lot of whitewashing going on in like history and especially in film and yeah. stuff. I just I'm not sure about that specific case. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting then because I remember Twitter kicked. Off. Oh yeah, because then the whole meme came about about Scarlett Johansson. She's like, I can play anyone. I can even play a tree, which was not not a great response. <laughs> but I think essentially what we're trying to like, it all stems from social media. Yeah. Like everything we've obviously talked about today. Yeah. Like social media is amazing and wonderful, and also deeply flawed. It's so flawed. How do you feel about cancel culture? I fucking hate cancel culture. I don't. I don't know how I feel about cancel culture, other than the fact that I don't think it works. No, it doesn't. Um, I can't. I think we had a conversation about it the other day, but like, yeah. So, um, Cody Co was attempted to be cancelled by Jake Paul, which is obscene in itself because Jake Paul should have been booted off the internet ages ago. ago. <laughs> but it was funny because instead of Cody being cancelled. He got more publicity and more fame from it. Well, the interaction was just so hilarious. It was some bizarre setup where somebody had, just for context for people who don't know, um, Cody Ko, Jake Paul, both very popular social media influencers like YouTube blogger type people. Yeah. Um, it took place in Jeff's barbershop. Yeah. Jeff is part of David Dobrik's vlog squad. Yeah. Um, Jeff used to be um like a hairdresser in prison etc yeah and um so cody's videos are mainly like reaction stuff like he does very funny that's so responses. cringe yeah yeah no yeah L. yeah just like responded to daft shit that's been put online like jake paul's videos for instance and so what they did was they set him up in whose barbershop jeff's in jeff's barbershop they set him up in jeff's barbershop like he's gonna get a haircut and then out of the way it comes jake paul already to start some shit and he goes up to cody co and he's like 
you are a bully and you bully children and you should be stopped. And then Cody's like, which children? And then Jake Paul's like, yeah, you're a bully. <laughs> but what was interesting from this situation is that, because Jeff made a video about it as well, and he was like, when he reached out to Jake, he was like, be civil. And Cody knew it was like happening. Oh. He knew to an extent, he knew that Jake was going to come out. Right. But they had scripted that Jake was going to come out and he's going to be like nice and happy. Right. And Jeff said multiple times he would never have put Cody in a situation that would have harmed Cody. He had several people there ready on standby. And then Jake Paul came out and he pulled out a knife <laughs> and a machete and an AK-47 but, and he blew Cody's brains out. But the R. Logan... No, no, the Paul brothers are problematic. Oh, lordy. Oh, they lordy. Are. But that is... For another conversation. Yeah, I feel like maybe there's perhaps t- almost too much to get yeah, into right now, and we are tired. Running t- short on time as well. We're running low on memory, we're running low on energy. I um started this video thinking I'll have uh, one glass of wine to ease myself in, and you know, it'll just be in a coffee cup and stuff. We've since filmed a few videos, which has resulted in a few glasses of wine. I feel that. I don't. I'm drinking water because I'm driving. Yes. Don't but drink a drive, kids. I think this is a good point to wrap up. Should we wrap it up, baby? Yeah. So um, we like we we decided we're gonna do like a what we're grateful for slash shout out to people. Yeah. So my shout outs are Evie. Yes. And um, so please go follow her. Um, and then Izzy's shop. Yes. Uh, Evie underscore P underscore Art. Um crew sock shop and spilt milk zine and jimmy. a space to be heard jimmy campbell wherever he may appear in the future and us yeah good work this has been a fucking adventure big of first, team first podcast yes there's been many tries many fails lots of learning um but yeah lots of anger <laughs> follow us on our social media we are at uni of oversharing on instagram currently yep. um subscribe to our podcast wherever mm, it may be wherever it may be to be announced tbc um message us ideas we'd love to have ideas so that we can pull them out of the hat later on yes future. let us know what you want us to talk about we'll talk about anything whether uni of oversharing we'll overshare about any subject yeah, we'll educate ourselves and hopefully educate you guys as well that's what we're aiming or for. we'll just chat absolute nonsense why 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 why? Why? This is what happens with me and you. <laughs> Maya's coming in here. I've got the real issues and the real facts and the hard hitting shit. And I'm in the corner like. <laughs> you'll you'll learn to love us. <laughs> or you not. Or not. <laughs> Leave us a hate comment. It helps no. with engagement. No, please don't. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> but on that bombshell, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are love the universe you. you're oversharing. We love you all very much. Good night. Good night, motherfuckers.